Innovation Rockstars. Innovation Rockstars. Today we welcome Dr. Ina Nordzig, Director of Entrepreneurship at the German domestic appliances manufacturer Miele. Hi, and welcome back to Innovation Rockstars. My name is Chris Müllroth, and in this episode, I'm very happy to welcome Dr. Ina Nordzig from Miele. So in her role as Director Entrepreneurship, it's her job to, yeah, let's say, encourage pioneers at Miele to enter new business areas, to conquer new business areas in order to drive growth for the business. So it's great to have you on the show. Thanks for being here. Hi, Chris. Thanks for having me. All right, so as always, we start with a short 60 seconds introduction sprint. So the introduction sprint is all about you, your career and your role at Miele. So I'd say the stage is yours. Let's go. Okay. Hi, my name is Ina. I'm 40, married, two kids. I live in Detmold. My career, well, I studied business administration economics, holding a PhD in knowledge management, and my professional career started 2007 when I joined a management consultancy focused on intra, no, not intra, innovation organizations and innovation strategy. And after 10 years then, I switched to Unternehmertum, one of the largest entrepreneurship centers in Europe. And I had the pleasure to shape the cooperation between startups and corporates in forms of incubators, accelerators, and corporate ventures. Then in 2020, Miele was looking for someone who installs entrepreneurship from the scratch for this traditional company. And since then, I can unpack my backpack of learnings in strategy, innovation organization, knowledge management, change management, and aligning culture of startup and corporate life. And I have to say, it's a ton of fun. Yeah, it's a ton of fun. And it sounds like it's the perfect fit for the role. So great. Okay, so next one, we have three sentence starters and uh, three sentence endings. And I'm eager to hear um, what you say. So let's start with the first one. The first one is uh, the most surprising thing about joining Miele for me was that... That is... Really is a family business. Well, although we have over 20,000 employees spread worldwide, um, all the people actually help each other and feel very committed to this brand. Yeah, that's great and certainly makes up a great part of the spirit. Um, also, maybe for the entrepreneurship program, but let's see. So, number right. two, um, I am best known for. Oh, that's easy. Promoting entrepreneurship everywhere and every time. <laughs> Got it. Okay. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. And finally, number three, um, the following quote would best describe me. Uh, get it done. Get it done. Short and concise. All right. Got it. So let's turn to Miele uh, for a while. Um, sure. I mean, as we all know, right, innovation is crucial for the future of organizations and so on. We, we all know that. And this is something that should be, you know, well known by everyone right now, right? But and I guess right now it's in the fourth uh, generation of that family. So in other words, a company with a very long tradition and thus also a, uh, let's say, particularly exciting case for the topic of entrepreneurship. So let's start with some of the fundamentals. Um, can you describe the entrepreneurship program at Miele um, and what the goals actually are? Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, to put it in one sentence, entrepreneurship is the startup program of Miele. Um, and our purpose is uh, to build new business for Miele, either as a spin-off or as a new department. And we want to achieve this by increasing the entrepreneurial behavior and thinking of all our people and by empowering them to transform their own ideas into new business. And um, thus entrepreneurship is well, not a department, not a program. It's more like initiative or a movement that is a combination of an HR program a cultural development program and a business development program. Okay, right. So now, obviously, Miele is a very successful company, right? And ha has been and, and surely is today still a very innovative company. So 
What, what made you actually launch the entrepreneurship program and how, how does it fit to, you know, maybe the Miele overall strategy? Mm -hmm. uh, counter question. When you think of Miele, what's the first thing you think about? Yeah, right. So that basically I have lots of Miele um, um, things um, at home, for example, washing machines, dishwasher and stuff. And I think this is mm -hmm. deeply rooted um, in the Miele brand and the perception of the public. Yeah. Correct. Um, well, in the next 10 years, our new corporate strategy reaches for significant growth, um, growth not only in this core business, but growth by expanding into four new business areas that complement these core businesses. And these areas are that we are taking on the challenge how we can help people at home to eat healthier and more sustainable more sustainable wow. um, B to help people enjoy bottle free beverages C help people to enjoy outdoor cooking and um, entrepreneurship is one element to achieve this growth while ensuring that we have a certain meal DNA in these growth areas um, in addition to this growth part of the strategy, our strategy calls also for more pioneering spirit in general. And as we are coming out of a multi-year efficiency program, now all employee must, well, let's say first regain confidence that they can and should try out new things. And entrepreneurship um, makes or should make a valuable contribution to that by both motivating the people and providing a platform for trying things out. Yeah, so it's actually, it, it sounds as if it is really all encompassing, right? The the entire organization, basically. And I think we'll, we'll get to that in, in, in a few minutes. But first, um, you know, can you tell me a bit more about how and with whom you actually build the program? So you said you build it from scratch, right? So you started mm -hmm. basically with a greenfield approach. So what, what were the steps? How did you build it? Did you have some partners involved? I'd be interested to hear something about that. Uh, well, yeah, let's uh, take a short journey uh, or short glimpse into my own journey. Well, I started with Miele in September 2020. And I started actually with a bullet point on a chart that says install entrepreneurship. That's all. Not more and not less. Um, and then, well, I did it like the way I learned it. I started with a why. I asked a lot of people, why do we need entrepreneurship? Um, I asked almost all of the first line in the management board and, and the line below, um, and I received answers ranging from, well, yeah, we need that because we need to grow. We need that because we need new ideas. We need that because we need to develop people or we need mm -hmm. a better employer branding. Um, and I collected all this. Um, and then I figured out, well, whatever concept you came up with, you can't make it right the first time to address mm -hmm. all these needs and all these goals. And then I decided to establish or install entrepreneurship the Lean Startup way. So I put down a rough concept on a few slides, uh, designed the process, aligned it with the board, and then uh, I didn't develop a thought through process, mm -hmm. gate plan, whatever. But instead, I found myself a pilot team that was willing to join me on this roller coaster, doing things the lean startup way in a traditional corporate. And mm -hmm. we tried out how it works to, to go along in this process, in this entrepreneurship rough concept I developed for Miele. And uh, we learned a lot on that way. <laughs> and um, after we figured out the, um, the Grinches in the organization, or the cracks, the natural cracks that, um, that need to break. Um, I redesigned the program and then I started to recruit a team because now I know which kind of people I need to do that within Miele. 
um, this program would have looked totally different for each and other company or situation I would have designed it for. Um, so this was my biggest learning or biggest advice for everybody. When you do that, try to understand why you do it and how your organization, in German you say ticks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, in order to, to collect the right people around you and to design a process and an organization that, that fits to your company. And, um, regarding your partner question, well, when I started staffing my own team, I also started to staff external uh, coaches for the teams because I learned if I am too close to the teams, I can't take my role as a jury member. And mm -hmm. therefore, I um, I ask our partner, what a venture, that's a company builder, to yeah. coach our teams in design thinking lean startup to guide them through the process so that at the gates, I can take the role of the jury um, and I'm not so much involved into the team dynamics. So what a venture is the partner and we work closely together with the University of Paderborn Yeah. Um, in particular, Professor Rudiger Kabst, because we wanted to know what effect does this entrepreneurship program has on our culture and on the people development. And therefore, we set up an efficiency measurement, um, how these learnings evolve over time. And that's for us as the ones who design the program and develop it further a valuable source of input for the next pivot let's say it so yeah, and that's that's super interesting and i you know 100 agree if you say well of course there are some blueprints right for setting up such entrepreneurship programs but obviously just taking the blueprint throw it at an organization and you know hope that it sticks ultimately will lead you nowhere right so i mean i think i think it would be a good idea to to talk about that in a bit more detail. But before we do that, actually, I want to play a quick game. Um, the game is called Either Or, and it's a really simple game, right? But it's very interesting um, to hear some of your answers. And it, it's very simple. It just works like this. So I, I'll, I'll uh, give you an option or two options, basically. Um, either one option one or option two. You choose one of the options. And then, yeah, just briefly say something why you chose that answer. And the trick is to be fast, right? Not think too much, but really actually be fast in answering that. So let's see, let's see what happens, okay? So the number one is um, if you had to choose either early shift or late shifts. Early shifts. Why? <laughs> Because I have a chance to have not so much, much noise in my house. I have two small cats. Yeah. And uh, whenever I can work before seven, I take that. <laughs> Very good answer. All right. So number two, and this is a tricky one, right? So would you either give up your PhD, your doctorate, or completely change the business area you're working in? For example, I don't know, becoming a pilot or something. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it either or? <laughs> um, I don't know. I... I don't know, actually. Um, I, yeah, I think I would give up my PhD. Okay, that's yep. locked in. Give up PhD, become maybe a pilot or something. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And finally, the last one, number three. Maybe that's, 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 yeah, let's see. So would you rather live four weeks without a smartphone or four weeks without a notebook, a laptop? Uh, without a notebook, because yeah, that's an easy I one, right? do almost everything about or with my smartphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. That was an easy one. Okay, perfect. Well, thanks. <laughs> Interesting answers, um, especially especially number two. And now let's get back to the entrepreneurship <laughs> program um, at Mille. So as said before, right, there are some blueprints for setting up entrepreneurship programs. But of course, ultimately, the success is highly depending on how you actually execute, right? How you tailor it to the organization, to the culture, to the history, um, to the strategy, and so on. So, and I think it's really interesting because at Miele, you have really two worlds, not clashing, but meeting, right? So you have a traditional family business 
that meets design thinking, lean startup, and actually a desirable startup culture and a lot more. So, and I think a lot is actually, and you said it before, a lot is actually on the people. So, and you started with that rogue unit, if you will, the team, the pioneers actually um, to build all this. But how do you find the right people to start building all this? Mm. Well, first answer, um, it's hard and it's easy in a, no, again, sure. <laughs> cut. <laughs> Uh, well, my experience in the last two years had shown me that that's no contradictory um, task, finding mm -hmm. people that are entrepreneurs in a family-orientated business. In the contrary, because we are led by our um, founder families um, mm -hmm. and because long-term planning and entrepreneurial thinking is in our everyday business. Um, the surprise or the acceptance um, of this topic entrepreneurship wasn't so big. Mm -hmm. um, and people felt, well, that's natural. Yeah, that's, that belongs to us, of course. Um, however, it is hard too to find the right people because as I said, we are coming out of this efficiency program and um, people need to learn to to widen their thinking again not to focus only on the tasks they need to perform on excellence but to think outside the box and to come up with new ideas yeah um however my task or the task of my team how we find people is to ignite and um, to excite the people to excite them for the problems in these new growth area to motivate them to dig deep in their personal purpose, um, what they want to do. And this is how we attract people to the program. And this is how we find people that want to become entrepreneurs. And did you, um, along the way, you know, building this also have to deal with, you know, the classic resistance to change? Um, and some parts, or, or was that actually not too much a part of your discussions and your, your first steps, maybe with the, you know, the board, the management team, or maybe the levels below? How, how was your experience with that? Um, no, on the contrary. First, we had um, many, many people who were excited that we have such a chance installed at Milo. And many people joined us with their ideas um, they have in their shelves. However, um, my, my formula to success there was make it less new and mm -hmm. make the barriers lower and the easy, very, uh, the entry very easy. Yeah. And yeah. I would like to, to make that more clear uh, how we did that. Well, in addition to this pure incubation process, most of the companies have installed. We have installed a talent pass uh, that is called mm -hmm. Talent Pass Entrepreneur. Most of the companies I know have installed talent passes for upper management careers, for project management careers, or right. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. You're familiar with that. But so I thought, well, to, to make it less new, this whole entrepreneurship thing, why not talk to HR and install a talent path entrepreneur because that's a structure people know and they trust in that. And so we, we have the topic entrepreneur on the same level of, of career opportunities than the traditional management career or an expert career. And um, so this is the make it less new thing. And the one or one element we added to this whole program and initiative is the community, the entrepreneurship community. It's an international community around the global middle world where everybody who says, well, I'm not the entrepreneur. I don't dare to do that step yet, perhaps. Yeah. Um, I can 
join in and I can participate in this pioneering spirit by sharing my personal expertise in whatever I do um, and helping the teams on an occasional basis. So if they have legal questions, engineering questions, name it, um, they can call an expert and have all the expertise Mila has on their fingertips. And through this community, where people can register, whoever wants, we, um, we lower the barriers to get in touch with entrepreneurship for everybody, not only for the people that want to become entrepreneurs, but also for everybody in the company. So that's actually, I think this is really brilliant, right? So you reduce the fear of something new by design, right? Because you say, okay, well, there's a community um, to lower the entry barriers. And then there is also, um, obviously, the HR talent path to becoming an entrepreneur, um, which neatly integrates this into, you know, HR operations and all the typical things you have um, at Miele. So that's actually two brilliant hacks, <laughs> I'd say, to, to make this more convenient uh, for everybody. So, and then what, what, what would you say, why do employees participate in that? So, you know, what, what gets them motivated? Um, and maybe are there even additional incentives that actually motivate them even more? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, this is one question we always ask when we talk to people who, who want to engage in this program. And of course, we ask that again, when people leave the program. And the the spread of motives is very wide. Some people say, well, I just want to learn what lean startup and design thinking is. Some people are motivated by expanding their Mila network because this community has over 170 people by now and people that don't meet each other in regular business. And that's one major motive. Others are really on fire for their idea and they want to do that um, without any doubts. These are the entrepreneurs everybody would expect. Right, yeah. On the other hand, we have people that say, well, yeah, I work for Miele 15 years, 20 years, and I'm mm -hmm. very specialized in my field, but I only manage. I, I want to do something again and get my hands yeah. dirty. Uh, that's the motive too. Cool. All right. So yeah, a very broad variety um, of different motifs and, and, and also motivations actually to join the program. Um, and do, do you have any additional marketing um, activities like, you know, raising awareness inside Miele, um, having some, I don't know, events online, offline. So how, how do you make people aware of the actual entrepreneurship program aside from the fact that it's maybe already an established um, career track um, in HR? Yes, if there's one thing I've learned, then you can't communicate enough mm -hmm. <laughs> because, um, well, it's a global spread company. And we started, of course, with internal emails, with posts in the intranet, in some newsletter of the different locations, all that stuff. But we recognized after a year that we really don't actually reach the people in the subsidiaries. And therefore, we started to produce testimonials with, with former participants. Um, we started to do little videos that explains the program. And we prep the communication uh, people in the subsidiaries with those materials. And they spread it in their regions. Um, so we have multipliers installed by now that do some of the communication for us. Mm -hmm. However, it's, it's, it's a hard job to, to make it present at any time. And um, this is the reason why we went external with communication just a few weeks ago. Um, because the, the might of LinkedIn and social media, when you share something there, has an impact on internal acceptance and yeah. awareness of the program too. 
Yeah, yeah, totally agreed. And actually, this is also how I, um, you know, found um, basically the program right through your external communication. I was like, geez, I need to talk to them. Sounds brilliant. Mm -hmm. huh? So, yeah, okay, well, that's interesting. Okay, so now let's say I'm an employee at Miele. Mm -hmm. um, and I heard, you know, um, of your program, maybe by internal or external communication, doesn't really matter. But now I know, hey, there is something. And I actually, this is, I say, well, this is really cool. Um, what do I need to do to participate? So how how could I get you know in touch with you, um, and how could I start? Mm -hmm. Well, that depends if you have an idea or not. Um, because if you don't have an idea and just want to take a glimpse of what it is all about, then you register as an entrepreneur talent. Everybody can do mm -hmm. that. You write us an email, and then you are in. Then you have access to motivation, uh, leadership, business modeling, or, or name it, classes, mm -hmm. where you can find out what entrepreneurship is about. Um, and you meet all the other people who have the same ambition. And we offer a lot of formats like ideation workshops, um, problem analysis, um, team building workshops, where you can meet each other and where you can find each other as a team and find an idea. When as soon as you have an idea and at least one teammate, you can apply for the incubation program, the uh -huh. so-called Miele Pioneers Camp. And um, this is very easy too. You just have to take a one minute video where you explain your business idea and like say in a lean canvas way. Uh -huh. um, and we will watch all that videos twice a year. And then we will select the teams that can participate in the next batch. And um, each batch starts with a three days boot camp. Mm -hmm. And um, there we, we test team and idea um, in a quick way and show everybody what it means to work the Lean Startup way. And after these three days, there's a, the first pitch of the team, the first yeah, actual pitch. And when they pass that pitch, uh, they, are into the, they are in the program. Mm -hmm. And then they will receive for, well, the whole program is eight months. It's a part-time program. And the people receive increasing time off the farer they are in the program. Ah, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. And um, they will also get increasing budget the far yep. they are in the program. But at least they have 30,000 euros they can spend on their idea um, yep. in order to convince a jury that this idea is valuable for Miele to create new business in. And from the from the experience, how large are the teams typically? Do you also have you know one person teams, or is it you know like like large teams? What what's the typical what's the typical team sizes that you typically you know expect? Well, one of our precondition is that you have to be at least two people um, because that makes a team. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, so. Two people is the minimum, and the maximum we had were five people. Okay, five people. Okay, well, that's interesting. Now, here is here is a thought. So the ideas that actually might be highly interesting, highly relevant, and maybe also highly impactful for your entrepreneurship program are, I assume, precisely those ideas that are not found in the core business or in existing business areas today, right? So. Um, you know, how can you ensure that you do not eliminate good ideas too early because they actually do not fit Miele's strategy? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a, that's a hard question because um, as we have set up this new strategy going into yeah. four new business fields, yeah. um, not in the core doesn't mean it doesn't fit to our strategy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um that's very special because we have uh, set the boundaries for the program that are already out of the core business. Um, and no idea can apply to the thing that is too close to the core business. That's mm. more my problem. <laughs> okay, interesting. Um, but in... Um, 
addition to this, is it core, is it non-core? Yeah. I have to say, sometimes I want things to be close to the core, or at least that people have an idea what the unfair advantage is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They want to play with this idea. Because why should a corporate invest in a startup when there is nothing they bring to the table that is close to the core business? Um, for example, if the team says, well, I can use our sales processes or sales channels, or I can use production capacities, um, then it is somehow using the core, yeah. but that's not a bug, but a feature. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Okay. Interesting. And can 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 you talk about some of the um, assessment criteria, the the rating criteria that you actually apply? So obviously, sure, fit to strategy is you know to a certain extent important, as you just said before. But what are some others? Having an unfair advantage, maybe um, maybe exploiting some modes that Mila basically have. So what are some of the criteria that are very important for you that those ideas should actually meet? Um, the criteria change depending on the stage where you are in the process. Yeah. Um, to get into the whole thing, it's most important that I see a motivated team um, that burns for their idea and that this idea fits to our uh, four new business areas. So yeah. that's all. Then you are in. Um, by the way, um, or along the way, you have to prove that there is a customer problem and you have to prove it not by asking only two people, but it needs to be fundamentally proved. And you have to prove that we are able to produce a solution to mm. this customer problem. And then you have to say, well, there is a potential that's interesting for us as a corporate. And this is, there has to be a business about 50 million euros a year. Um, yep. Otherwise this is too small or we would invest in too many small things that wouldn't be efficient. Yeah, which makes perfect sense. And by the way, how do you, how do you deal with um, the idea of disruption? Like w would you be okay with, there is a, maybe a new, um, entree or intrapreneurial um, initiative that could actually cannibalize um, um, some existing business, would that be okay to your program as well? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But uh, better we disrupt ourselves than someone else does. <laughs> yeah, 100%. That's why I'm asking this. <laughs> okay. Yeah, interesting. And as, as you said before, you came from a cost-cutting background, right? From a cost-cutting phase. So, um, and I think, you know, probably, the, you know, the, the program is funded by cash flow right out of the business so of course when the main business is doing well that works right but what if not so is, is there um you know wh wh when do you actually decide um, whether the projects are um, deemed to be successful and will be continued you you said before you had the meter funding approach but it's at some point in time there needs to be a go no go decision well do we really invest mm -hmm. in maybe you know start scaling this um so is, is there any any, you know, um, hard cut where you basically say go or no go um, before you actually do larger investments into those initiatives? Yeah, it depends what you consider large. Um, mm -hmm. Well, when we talk about hardware, it's very fast, a very huge amount of money you yes. have to invest yes. to come up with a prototype. And therefore, well, I would say the first five months of this program, we go very easy on the teams. Mm -hmm. and gives them room to explore and to find out if there really is some gold nugget uh, they have found. And then we sh look at the teams case by case and decide what do we believe is the nugget we are going for. Um, yeah. Of course, as I said, we can't do 50 small things. We also have to place our bets. And um, this depends on yeah how much business is behind this idea, how good does it fit to to our middle values, and um, how into it is a team. So as, I got everything, it. Okay. as 
every other investor we we buy the right. team was the idea. <laughs> right. Well, that's that's really insightful. So okay, um, we we are kind of close already to the end of this episode, but maybe you know to 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 wrap this all up. Uh, maybe maybe you can uh, quickly summarize for us um, if you would have you know three recommendations. Let's make it three <laughs> for for building an entrepreneurship <laughs> program. What would those three recommendations be? Mm. Well, perhaps I repeat two I mentioned earlier. Uh, first is start with why. Understand why you are doing this for your organization, and shape your program the way it fits to your organization and not to any blueprint recommendation. Second, um, communicate, communicate, communicate. You can't over communicate um, to reach all the people you need. And third, um, it's about the people. Um, in case of any doubt, I would buy a team, not an idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. And maybe looking looking forward, you know, a couple of months, so maybe one or two years. Um, are there any plans to develop the Pioneers Camp even further? So is, is there something on the roadmap um, that you'd like to share for even expanding, enhancing the program? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, my, my vision for entrepreneurship is that in, in 10 years, this, um, this habits, this understanding of pioneering new things is somehow anchored in our culture, in our processes, in our leadership. Then I that I don't have to excite and ignite so much anymore, but that it's a self-fulfilling or self-empowering network uh, where all these things happen happen naturally. So I don't know uh, how it will look like then and what is up or in front of me until then. But what I know is that uh, I will learn year by year how I have to adapt to the program and I have to shape it that it fits to the current situation of our mill employees yeah and i think this is an awesome vision to go after right so okay that's the future now let's look at the past if you look at your um time at Miele so far um what would you say what was your greatest innovation rockstar moment so far <laughs> well um Miele is a premium brand as you know yeah and we are very proud of our brand and um, when, I, when I started designing the Pioneer Scam, I was, well, I want to have a brand and the brand thing. Um, and I want to have my own logo. And very many people said to me, this will never happen. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, and then starting of the year, it happened. Um, and that's what my rockstar moment when I said, well, yeah, you can do that. You can change things in a traditional organization. And if you have a movement supported by strategy, uh, supported by people, supported by culture, and everybody is pulling on the same angle, um, it is very valid to, um, to communicate in an own way and uh, to establish the Miele Pioneers Camp and its own logo. Yeah, that's an outstanding rock star moment. So do you have your own merchandising already? Of course. <laughs> of course. See, Why am I even asking? <laughs> oh, I do. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes, you do have your merchandising. Brilliant. All right. Well, that's what I call a rock star moment. <laughs> Thank you very much. And, and with that moment in mind, we wrap up this episode. Ina, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for sharing um, the experiences and the insights. This was very insightful. Uh, thanks much. Thank you very much, Chris, for having me. It was my pleasure. All right. And to everybody listening or watching, if you like the show, then leave us a rating or a review and share the podcast with your colleagues. And if you want to get in touch, simply shoot us a message at info at innovationrockstars.show. Now that's it. Thanks for your time. See you in the next episode. Take care and bye-bye. This was innovation rock star Dr. Ina Nordzik, providing insights into the entrepreneurship program at Mila. If you would like to give us feedback on this episode or know someone, perhaps yourself, 
who also has some thrilling stories or insights to share from the world of corporate innovation, just shoot us a note at info at innovationrockstars.show. You like the show? Then leave us a rating and recommend it to others. For more inspiring innovation stories, visit our website at www.innovationrockstars.show or browse through our Innovation Rockstars channel on all major podcast platforms.